What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Tech with Sean. And this Ryzen 5 stock cooler is a hot son of a gun. So today we're going to be swapping that out with a Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition air cooler. And we're going to see if that does anything to cool stuff down. Because the way it's going right now, we've got idle temperatures sitting at about 46C. It was at 40 minimum right when we booted it up and uh, running Cinebench once got us up into the 80s. So let's run it a couple times here and we'll see what we can get it up to. Oh, by the way, I went into the BIOS and uh, locked all the clocks at 3.9 gigahertz. So this isn't even at its regular boost clocks. It runs it pretty good. It doesn't lose a ton of performance, um, I don't think. I mean, that's still a good clock for it to sustain. The boost or the base clock is 3.6 gigahertz, so I mean that's that's higher than the base clock, but still, this cooler sucks. <laughs> so our first score, so it's still got a 15.19. So I mean that's not a terrible score. Let's start it up again. When you start running these back to back, this is a short test, um, but I didn't want to install like Prime 95 or nothing crazy because those are, you know, you just get some crazy temps with those. But we're up to 80 right now. When I had this at the stock clocks, it was getting up over to the 90s real easy. And if we run this a few times, it'll get up over 92. Watch her go. The voltage it's reporting is not very high. That was something I noticed um, when I dropped the clocks from the stock, just you know, letting it bounce around and do what it wanted to. When I locked it at 3.9, the voltage dropped from like 1.4 to uh, like around a volt. Sorry, I'm. Trying to click over there and restart it in the middle. <laughs> 86. We're getting there. We're getting there, buddy. Don't worry. Just give it a few minutes. We'll get there. This is with the case fans on Max too. Here, I'll put my I'll clip my mic over by the fans for a minute. Yeah, so we got them things rip roaring. But it looks like about 87, 88 is where we're gonna max out right now, and that's at 3.9 gigahertz, and that's just too hot for my taste. So. Let's uh, go ahead and install this thing and see what that does for us.
Okay, we're back on the other side of this cooler install, and uh, I tell you what, it made a pretty good difference. Here we got, you can see the cooler in there, it, it comes out really far, it almost touches the side panel. <laughs> now, when I first put it in here, I initially ran Cinebench, and it was idling at about 40 degrees still. And when I ran Cinebench at this 3.9 gigahertz setting, it shot all the way up to like 70 something degrees again. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. So then I was thinking about it and I made such a noob mistake. I left the dang sticker on the bottom of the cooler. So this was only running about five degrees cooler, but it still had the plastic on there. So um, yeah, once I took that off, now you can see we're idling under 40 C. So we're about 15 degrees cooler than it was on the stock cooler. And we're gonna go ahead and run this. And it was getting up into the 80s before. But now you'll see we're in the in the 60s, so it's dropped like 15 to 20 degrees off of this. And it kind of makes me salty that they didn't put the Wraith um, what is it? Spire? Is that, yeah, Wraith Spire is the bigger one. They should have put the cooler from the 2600X in the same package with the 2600. So here we go, back to back runs and it's only getting up to like 65. So one more test, I'm gonna go back into the BIOS. I'm gonna let the, the clocks do their thing and boost up over four gigahertz and uh, we'll see what kind of you know temperature we get and how that affects our score. Alrighty, we're back here at our stock um, speeds. So as you'll be able to see here, we're bouncing all around. It's not locked at the 3.9 anymore. And uh, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and run Cinebench and see what kind of temperatures it comes up with. Now I will say for the idle temps, um, this is idling hotter than it was at 3.9 gigahertz. Um, you can see it's like in the 40s, basically. It was in the 30s at 3.9, but it was closer to 50 uh, with the stock cooler. So we'll see what it does. We'll run at least a couple, a couple rounds. Oh, 70s. So it looks like it's maxing out right around 76, 77. So it's about 10 degrees cooler than it was at the 3.9 lock. And um, this is at the stock clocks. We'll do one more. I wanna see what the voltage is like. As you can see, this is taking way more voltage now. Um, and I'm not sure that it's really doing a lot more for my scores though. So it's getting up about 77. And our score is 1543. Now that's crazy because my score uh, was about 15, mid 1500s when I had it locked at 3.9 and it was taking way less voltage when it was under load. You can see that it's spiking up to over 1.4. So you can, I don't know. I'll play around with it. I may end up keeping it locked at 3.9 though and just having it run cooler, keeping the voltage low. But if you're experiencing some crazy out of control temps with your Ryzen 5 um, and you're using the included Wraith Stealth cooler, I would recommend switching it out for something a little beefier. You could probably try the Wraith Spire if you can get one off somebody that upgraded to water cooling or something. Uh, you could use a fan like this, a, a different non-RGB Hyper 212. Um, Really, almost anything's going to be better than that dinky little thing that they put in there. So, thanks for watching along. Um, 
give us a like, subscribe, and uh, may your chips run cool. <laughs>